Good. So glad you're here. And, um, and I've been wanting to do this for the longest time. Just talk to you, and I know your daughters, especially Linda. Linda's your other daughter. You have uh, twin daughters, Debbie and Linda, and the, and the younger daughter, Peggy. And, and I know Linda has been wanting to immortalize your life by, you know, asking you certain things about your life and, and journaling it. Mm -hmm. has, she, has she been doing that lately? Yeah, she must think that I'm going to die in the next day or so because she's been doing this for a good while now. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, there's a lot to be known about you. And I think one of the things that, um, that I wanted to do also is put this in video for you because you have a lot of followers. And every time I meet somebody and it's – and they typically, if I find out they have Baltimore roots, I always drop your name. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I drop your name. And and it's really cool when I start talking to people about you. They go, oh, my gosh, I love this guy. I love what he's, you know, hearing him asking where you are. They just, what is he up to? So I wanted to take this time to get to know you better mm -hmm. and share this with, with your friends and family. You may not want to know me better. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's what we got the edit button for. You know, right. And, and uh, so, so tell me, um, Frank, where where were you born? And tell me about the place where you in Baltimore, where you were born, and what that was like. Well, I was born actually uh, in Marl Park, uh, which is not too far, maybe a half a mile. Uh, a mile the most, I guess a mile or so, from Pigtown, where my parents grew up. They pig call town. it pig. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's it, that's you know, when when you say Pigtown, a lot of people think you're 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 demeaning the the area. It's not that at all. The people who live in Pigtown, the least of the families that are still there, it's called Washington Square now. Uh -huh. You know, they had to make it, you know, gentrified, I guess. In fact, the whole neighborhood is gentrified now. But um, pick down for, for, the, for the people that still remember it uh, or, or who live there, uh, it's still Pigtown. And the re there's a history as to why it's called Pigtown. Why is that? Because... I guess at the turn of the century, and I have a picture of it somewhere, uh, where pigs were run through the streets of of uh, Scott Street, Washington Boulevard, that uh, that whole area down there. Uh, they were they came off the train, not too far from Scott Street, maybe a half a mile or so, and they were literally just run through the streets to eventually go to the slaughterhouse in, in Baltimore. So that's how the name Pigtown got its name because they ran the pigs through the streets of, Bal uh, of South Baltimore. In fact, Pigtown is the only neighborhood that I know of in Baltimore that still has a, an anthem, which they're very proud of. <laughs> it, it basically goes like this. Pigtown will shine tonight. Pigtown will shine. And I'm going to abbreviate it with a bar of soap and a tur turkey's towel. Pigtown will shine. Now you say, where did that come from? I mean, pig, you know, turkey's towel and a bar of soap. Marble steps. Every week, people got out to wa wash their marble uh, steps. Yeah. At the, when you talk about Baltimore, at least certain sections of Baltimore, including over on Wilkins Avenue, where they have the longest block. It might be the longest block in, 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 in the country. Uh, it, uh, it's right where St. Benedict's Church is. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the longest block in, in Maryland, maybe in the entire country. And the, uh, if, you want to talk, if, you, if you want to see marble steps, they're still there. Now, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that these marble steps, a lot of them came from, if you look in these row homes in Baltimore, and that, that these things were used as ballasts from ships that were coming in to the inner harbor 
mm-hmm. because they did not have any goods in them, and so they had to wade down the hull, and they had no, and they were just stacking up like crazy in Indio Harbor, and so they use these steps, these <coughs> these marble steps and granite steps now, uh, these uh, boulders or rocks as steps for yeah. their homes. I've heard that story, and it's, I'm, I'm sure it's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, Belgian blocks were also used as ballast, and they call them cobblestone streets today. You know, if you see a street that has, you know, the cobblestones, as Mm -hmm. they call it, that actually came uh, into Baltimore because Baltimore was a big shipping port. Uh, They used that as ballast as well. Uh, They called it Belgian block, and uh, they made up... um, that's how the most of the streets in Baltimore, you know, back in the 1800s, most of the streets in Baltimore were basically this Belgian block. And you still see some of it. If I'm not mistaken, I think down by City Hall, they still, right in front of City Hall, they still may have uh, some of this Belgian block. So uh, what was the street that, you, that you, were born, you were raised on? What was that? You know, I'll be honest with you, I don't even know the name of the street. All I know is that when I was six months old, we moved from Morrow Park because I was, you know, six months old, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even remember Morrow Park, to be honest with you. I'm six, you know, six months old. We moved out to Irvington. Irvington, yes. Old Frederick Road. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's where you, uh, that's where you shared some really incredible stories to up uh, for us uh, and your family when the things that you used to do at the, uh, what's it, the, um, uh, the armory is that the bands and the different things that you did share that sto- those stories those are incredible stories that you guys did well we well, actually we're getting ahead of so- oh, okay. ourselves because right. that came later when I moved to Ellicott City I would have you know dances out of the Ellicott City armory and things oh, okay. like that but as far as Irvington is concerned um, my first recollection of Irvington was probably when I was about three years old maybe. And that's when I remember my aunt or cousins, aunts, you know, uncles would come over to the house. And I can remember them coming to the house. So that would be my earliest recollection of, of Baltimore or Irvington. And then, you know, when I was, because um, you don't remember too much when you're three years old, mm-hmm. you know or two two or three years old but i can remember just a few things um and one of the things i do remember is that it was a big deal you know today people go down the caribbean uh or they'll go to ocean city back when i was you know five six seven eight years old we went to the shore and the shore was mostly beaches in Anne Arundel County. Ah, okay. And we would go down every Sunday in the summertime. Every Sunday, we would go to the shore. The shore, as they called it. Ah, okay. Well, we used to do Rehoboth Beach. Oh, well, yeah. You, when we were growing up. Yeah. Well, that, you had the Bay Bridge, didn't you? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah you yeah, had the, yeah, did. yeah, you had the Bay Bridge. We didn't have the Bay Bridge then. Oh, okay. Remember, we went to the shore. Yeah, the we baseball. stayed on the western shore. I, I never, I, I never got to Ocean City until I was like, I guess about twenty-three years old. So no. how, so how did they navigate that to, back then? Was it a ferry, or you had yeah, to you go had up? A, you, you, yeah, if you Delaware. wanted to go to the eastern shore, you had to go across a ferry, and uh, I did go across the ferry a few times. Um, you know, getting back to Irvington, and I, I live right across the street from St. Joseph's Monastery School. Mm-hmm. And so when I was 10 years old, I joined the Monastery Drum Corps, played the snare drum, the tenor drum. And we would have drum corps competitions. And I remember this one summer we had a series of competitions down at tall old Tallchester amusement park on the eastern shore the only way to get there back then this was when i was this was probably when i was about 
uh, 10, 11 and 12, you know, 11 and 12 years old. And the only way to get there, because I'm talking about when I was 11 or 12, I guess, what year would that be? I was born in 1938, 38 to 48, 48 to 58, you know, I don't know, uh, whatever it was, you know. Yeah, my calculators are recording right now, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we um, we had this uh, uh, these competitions with other church drum corps. Uh, every church, not every church, but many churches in Baltimore had a, a drum corps. Was there competitions or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's what we went to uh, uh, Tallchester for, to go into the competitions with against other uh, that drum corps. That's cool. And you'd have judges that would— uh, And you played the drums. I played snare drum and Oh, yeah, I remember you had a drum, drum set in your house. Yes, I did. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, never took, um, I never took lessons other than rudimental drumming lessons, which is far different than orchestral drumming. Uh, rudimental drumming is very rudimental. Okay. That's why they call it rudimental drumming. <laughs> <laughs> How rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, we, yeah, I live right across the street from the school, and so I, uh, you know, I, I joined the drum corps, and uh, we went to in, uh, in these competitions, and the only way we could get there was by the ferry boat. So the bus would take us down to where the Bay Bridge, where, you know, if you're on the western shore where you go across the bridge now, you used to pay the toll, now it's automatic, you know. Right. Um, but that's where the ferry boat was. The ferry boat was right to the right of what is the eastbound two lanes. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's, that's where you picked up the ferry boat. And then we took the ferry boat over to, uh, you know, to Tallchester, mm -hmm. which was a great place. You you could get to Tallchester either by the ferry boat or you could pick up. Uh, is Tallchester still there? Unfortunately, the amusement park is not there anymore. It's a big marina now, a uh, huge marina. Okay. From what I understand. Um. The other way of getting there was down on Pratt Street. They had the uh, the Wilson Line steamboats um, that actually took you across the bay. It took about 45 minutes to get there okay. from downtown, oh, from cool. the Inner Harbor. Oh, it was great. Well, my cousins used to take me down to Tallchester, uh, and that in itself could be a whole program, you know, about – uh, Tallchester Park and amusement parks in Baltimore, but Tallchester was really neat because that would that really felt like you were going on vacation. Uh, you'd pick up the you'd pick up the boat in at Pratt Street, and it was uh, the Wilson Lines, I think they called it, and I believe that the name of the ship was uh, one of the ships was called the Emma Giles, and there was another one. And that would take you over to Tallchester. And so you brought a picnic lunch with you and everything. You Because you, you went back the same day that, or that evening. And we would we'd go over there. And um, the big deal was is that the kids would have to get off the boat for, first and run up the hill to get a table, a picnic table. So the parents sent the kids, so go the get us a table. Sent the, yeah. Or my cousins, in this case, you know, would say, you go ahead, you know. And I'd go run up the hill and, you know, reserve or lay claim to a picnic bench. And that's where you that, that's where you hung out for the rest of the day, other than going all the rides and uh, the racer dips, as we call them. Uh, they call them roller coasters today. Racer we dips. Called them, we called them racer dips. And uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. And then we came back that evening. Yeah, you went down there, you got the boat about, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, and then took 45 minutes to get over there uh, to Tallchester, and then you, uh, you know, you, you stayed there until, I guess it was about early evening, you got back. Isn't that something? I never even heard of Tallchester before. 
really. Never did. That's that is absolutely amazing. <coughs> Do you think they have any photographical or any like photographs or anything like that around? I had uh, I I went back to Tallchester um, when I was working at Channel Thirteen, and I went back there along with my photographer Norman Vogel, and we went back there with one idea in mind, and that is to, even though the park had been abandoned for a number of years, uh, we wanted to go back and try to relive what it was like. And it was kind of sad because... You did that with Gwyn Oak, too, didn't you? That was another story. Yeah, but Um, that was similar, though, right? uh, Gwyn Oak was basically uh, a... um, I guess it was a piece that I did for Channel 13 regarding the last day of Gwyn Oak. Oh, okay. So go back to Tallchester. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, know, Tallchester, it was, um, I got off track there. Uh, So you 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 went back there? Oh, yeah. We went back. My photographer and I went back and basically to kind of relive uh, what it was like, you know. And it was kind of sad because not only was the park abandoned, but s- some of the old concession stands and even some of the old rides had been taken over by Mother Nature. All the weeds and trees and everything. And you'd see in the midst of these trees and weeds maybe the old roller coaster that was still up. You know, they, they, it was just left abandoned. And that is so cool. Yeah, and, and, and what we did is we took some of the old pictures that we had of, or we got somehow or another, of what it was like back in the glory days when it was still a thriving park, and then kind of interspersed those with uh, what, what was left that you know, is, remains. That's amazing. And I remember the theme song we used uh, – and it was, again, it almost brought tears to your eyes. Remember uh, Mary Hopkins sang that song called Those Were the Days, My oh, Friend? Oh, yes, Those Were the, the days, days, My, my friend. friend. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we use that. Um, but, I see you know, you getting a little for camp right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that, you know, that's life. I mean, the, you know, the, there's so many things. I mean, if you try to uh, go back. And, and and it's like they always said, you can't go back, you know. Well, when I was in television, we did try to go back, you know, because I loved doing those kind of stories about what it was like. And even today, you know, people love to talk about uh, things from the past. That's why we're here. Yeah. It, to talk about your past. So, yeah. all right, so Tall Chester is one of the memories that you have of growing up in Baltimore. And – uh and so what are the other things that you remember specifically about when you were in Irvington um, that brings back some great memories for you? Well, uh, you know, from the drum corps, you know, uh, well, first of all, I went to the monastery school at the age of five. Um, and that was called what? St. Joseph's Monastery oh, Saint School. Joseph's Monastery. Right. Is that Saint, where St. Joe yeah. is now? Okay. My, uh, uh, well, Mount St. Joe is up in Irvington further. Okay. But the monastery parish, as they call it, uh, was huge, uh, even by today's standards. Uh, that's another sad story because it was such a great place to grow up in, the, the Irvington area in general. Mm. I mean, if I had to relive, you know, growing up again, you know, I wouldn't want to live anyplace else. It was so terrific. Yeah. And the church, everything, you didn't even have to be a Catholic. I mean, it was a everything Catholic church. Everything surrounded around the church. Oh, it was. Uh, they had 32 different organizations that you could join. Par- uh, you know, parents, adults, kids, girls, boys. They had something for everybody. You didn't have to leave the area. And I didn't, you know, until I started playing basketball at the age of 12. And then by 13... We started, uh, yeah, the, the the priest that was the moderator of our boys' basketball team took us up to Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, his hometown, uh, the parish up there. 
and uh, run by the Passionist priest. And it was um, it was a lot of fun. It was my first time out of state. You know, I was. How old were you? I was, uh, you know, tw- uh, thirteen years old. Thirteen. He took us up there, and that was a big deal. It took us forever because there was no ninety-five or anything like that. You know, back then, uh, or any major highways. I mean, we went the old routes. You know. Yeah, I remember getting on Route Twenty Nine as a young kid, and that was like a big adventure for us. Then. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. Um, but as I said, you know, growing up in that area. Um, And growing up eventually into the 50s, uh, if I had to go back in time, that would be the time that I would like to go back in. Back in the 50s and and just prior to the, I'd say I'd say the 50s in general, uh, because you know, like like 1951 is when I graduated from the monastery school. So I would say the 50s all the way up until, you know, in the early 60s, if I had to go back in time, that's the period of time I would want to go back in. Oh. And, like, and in fact, you could put me in that time capsule and just stay there. Uh, <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to take a little bit of a break here right now. And so uh, stay tuned. We're just, we'll be right back with you. Hi, Frank Luber fans. This is Chris Weymouth, and I really hope you're enjoying Walking Down Memory Lane with Frank Luber. This is the first of a few videos that we're going to put together for Frank. Stay tuned, subscribe, like, and we hope to see you soon.